This is going to be called racist. Watch this. This in in well, not even in the time they could literally call this racist now. <laughs> See how that white lady, this black lady, is just trying to feed her family. This black lady's just trying to feed her family. She took the whole damn meat section. Look at all that. She didn't just slide one goddamn rack of ribs down her pants leg. She took the whole goddamn meat section. And here's the thing, you fucking gliders will say, you gliders believe it when these people say they're scared of police. Think about it. Salute the Black Gen Z, man. I'm going to drop the link in a minute, man. Salute to um, Radio Blip Mode. He says, yo, Ock, here's my donation and support for crowning you king of America. Scorpion Squad bowed up. Yeah, man. Salute to you, bro. Listen, man. Yeah, she's not starving. That woman lives a better life than most gliders. Everything's free. This is how fucking dumb gliders are. When everything's free, it doesn't matter if you're poor. Let me just say that one more time to you fucking gliders. When everything's free, being poor is irrelevant. This woman gets fucking food stamps and all that shit. She's still stealing. This woman has a Section 8 house. Listen, the only reason I talk about Section 8 is because my stepfather owned seven properties in Washington, D.C. And several of them were Section 8 properties. And the reason he likes Section 8 because you're guaranteed to get your money. In D.C., a lot of it's hard to get your money out of renters because the squatter rights and the um, got to go to housing court for like a year to get somebody out of the property. Section 8, the check comes in the mail every day because it's coming from the government. But I've seen these women who've made terrible decisions, who've got eight kids by six different thugs. Who dropped out of high school, who didn't go to that job interview, who didn't fucking get that certificate, who didn't fucking become an RN or a CA or whatever the fuck you call it, CN or whatever. Who made bad decision after bad decision. I've seen them living in a fucking six bedroom, a five bedroom house in a neighborhood in D.C. where literally you can't find a house under a million dollars. People are buying fucking fixer-uppers sight unseen in D.C. in some neighborhoods. They're buying fixer-uppers sight unseen, all cash. Do you understand that in D.C., white gliders from other states who get jobs in D.C. are buying fixer-uppers sight unseen. 
all cash for fucking five, six hundred thousand dollars in shitty neighborhoods. And let me tell you something. Women like this can live in a good neighborhood, a six bedroom house for fucking $48 a month. I I shit you not. I seen it with my own eyes. Section 8. They just have to pay a copay. It's like when you go to the hospital and you pay a copay. They just have to pay a copay for the rent. Like 60 bucks a month. And the government pays the rest. Shout out to Society of Benevolence, man. Said I, was, I said I will match Black Gen Z's donations. So here, yes, yeah, salute to Black Gen Z, man. Salute to you, the Society of Benevolence. Thank you. Think about it. Most people at this point, when they got half of the shit in the, the car, they would have left. At this point right here, where she's got basically half of the shit in the car, the woman's on the phone calling the police. They've been calling the police for the last five minutes since you since they caught you leaving out the store. The police are on their way. The police have been notified. They're on their way. You would think that this woman at this point would say, "All right, I got I got half of my half of my haul in the trunk. Let me close this trunk and leave and get out of here." Cause I'm just terrified of the police. I'm black, you know. Black people are terrified of police. You know what I'm saying? But no, she's gonna stay there until every piece of fucking meat from that truck is in her fuck. I mean, from that basket is in her trunk. Pause. Just 